Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Goro Chat, the best anime podcast on the internet. You know, they they say uh, it is possible to have too much of a good thing, and I have to say, this anime season, I'm getting a lot of uh, good things that I would normally like. <laughs> To the point a where... lot of uh, your brand of bullshit. I yes. think the definitions of good in this state are loose. So, uh, you know, I, I, me being a fan of lighthearted anime comedies, uh, we have a good lot of them this season. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a lot of them this season, uh, and it's to the point where it's almost getting overwhelming. But uh, <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't know if uh, how you how you all are feeling about it. Yeah, we're just waiting for the incest twist in one of them to drop, so you uh, can call the uh, call the competition a bit. Um, we we might have had one of those some in here already, so <laughs> um. that's possibly two, depending on how you want to define incest. Oh my! Anyway, great way definitions to start the of podcast. incest in this state are loose. Oh my goodness! <laughs> great way to start the podcast. That's anime, baby. Uh, so yeah, we are we are um at the three episode test for a lot of these shows. So uh-huh. I think we're you know th- these are the, the the make or break moments. Indeed, we'll, we'll really be locking in what we're going to be watching for the rest of the season. So mm-hmm. let's get into it. Before we do that, we'll introduce everybody. I'm Jell. I'm joined by Iro. I'm still here. I'm not dead yet. Still with us. Uh, we're joined by G. What's good, everybody? And for this episode, we have Aqua. Finally. The moment everyone was looking for. Yes. Aqua looking makes... For, looking forward to... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> moment of truth. Aqua reappears once Ob- again. Obligatory obligatory once per season cameo appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm so like, I'm um, like the Pontiac Bandit from Brooklyn Nine Nine. My episode <laughs> is the one everyone looks forward to every season. <laughs> yeah, we got we got to put that. We got to start including that in the tags for the podcast, just uh, so people know <laughs> which ones right. to look out for. All right, all right. Well, let's get into talking to some anime. Uh, we have some leftover new shows that either mm-hmm. weren't out or I hadn't gotten to before last episode. That we can kick things off with. Um, I'm just gonna so, uh, preemptively warn everyone now that we'll probably not be talking about any of these shows next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's not true. One of them is good. One of them is good. Okay, okay. Uh, I felt like he had to do his due diligence which here. Which one? I'm looking at but the list which one here. Is like, which one is good? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a mystery. So let's let's start by talking about uh, summertime render or summertime rendering. I have seen it officially both mm-hmm, ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, this it's is about, a, of... it's about 3D artists like Shirabako. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to say summertime rendering is when the sun initially appears in the sky as like an, a hexagon and then it slowly becomes round. <laughs> uh, if, if only it were that simple. Um, this is one of the other, or I should say the other high profile Disney Plus release. Uh, oh boy, this season. yes. So, currently so it's fun only, for the whole family. Currently only officially available in Japan on Disney Plus, but anyway. Uh, this is the one, if you may recall from our preview show, it was, like, small town, isolated island, psychological thriller type. Yeah, sure. I mean, this okay. is often a, a pretty solid premise to work from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the, the, the general idea is that there's this dude that grew up on this tiny island in Japan, small town, small island town. And uh, he was adopted by some family friends, and when he got old enough, he moved away, and now it's like a year or two later, he's being called back because one of his adopted sisters has apparently uh, died in a drowning accident, and he's coming back for the funeral. And that's Uh where the the show kicks off, and, you know, everything appears normal at first on the surface but then you know some weird things start happening behind the scenes and he has to mm-hmm. investigate what's going on uh-huh, uh-huh. sure great I'll, this sound, can work is, with that, is this right? like a is this like a visual novel well <laughs> it very much feels right because like, like, i feel like i feel like this is what i don't know anything about uh umineko when they cry or whatever 
but yeah, I feel it, like it, when it people feels talk very about much that, like I'm like, isn't this what they're talking about? I like, mean, you know, it's more like, like this. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's more like what you're talking about is like, has this show and Umineko and all of those other things have they ever seen a Japanese horror movie in their <laughs> life? And okay, that is sort of the inciting right, yeah, <laughs> well, sure. foundation. I, I will here. say. Before we get too deep into that, I will say it did very much give me like mid two thousands, early two thousands visual novel vibes. Right, right. Uh-huh. Like where... it, it feels more like okay. not the like Umineko kind of visual novel, but the like, like you know, the the other kind of visual novel. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I'm thinking the ones where they stuff in sex scenes for no reason, just right, to sell copies. Right. Oh. Uh, but. It is to be not clear. Is actually... This is an ad- this is an adaptation of a manga. Right? Yeah, this is actually a manga adaptation, but it does <laughs> okay. feel like that. But but to before we get too deep into trashing this thing, I will say, um, and this is always this is always way more disappointing when this happens. But they were doing really good for like the first two thirds of the episode. Ah, they had you in the first uh, half, huh? They dragged you in. <laughs> so like. It has this really like top notch cinematic presentation. Mm. Um, the, the the characters were pretty good. Like they they the everything felt pretty natural because I mean they're dealing with heavy stuff because I mean he's coming back because mm. his sister essentially drowned right right and and you know they start building up this sort of like creepy mystery thing in the background and you're like all right you know what. Um, I, I, I'm into this. I mean, and that then, premise is fun. Like, a premise yeah. alone, I probably would have checked this out if I hadn't heard you know, <laughs> what, what, everybody, what, you. what everybody else said about it. So, <laughs> so then what? Then things start to go down a bit, and like, at one point, this old dude just shows up and just tells them everything that's happening. Huh. So, like, and and it's not even like mysterious. All the mystery out. It's not even like mysterious old man. It's like just some old guy they know on the island. Like they knew who he was. Uh, like right, because island. often in that premise, you will local, have yeah. yeah, you'll have like the weird old man or woman who like speaks cryptically, and no. the, the protagonists don't initially understand what they're saying. And it's only in like the final act where they're like, "My God, the old man knew all along," or something. Uh-huh. Or the old so, man was me from the future, or something <laughs> like. That. Yeah, so so I'll 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 fly the spoiler flag from this point. Uh, I'm sure you guys uh-huh. don't care. The yeah. uh, the old man just shows up and he's like, oh, yeah, so there's these, like, doppelgangers of everybody on the island and they're killing people. And, Dang, you know, I hate to see it. Better watch out if you see somebody that looks like you because they're probably going to try to kill you. And there's no further, like, like, explanation. Just from what you just said, that's I feel like that's something you could draw out for quite a while and have yeah. it be right, an interesting, like, tense... Right, yeah, like, so, look, so they actually... Yeah, armchair writer here, but it's like <laughs> that could that could be a pretty ch- good chilling premise for like a psychological thriller, right? Is like out of the corner of your eye, you see someone who just looks exactly like you, exactly, or, but you're not quite sure, right? Or like, maybe exactly like your dead, or or yeah, sister, your dead sister, yeah. or like, but there's like one detail that's off, right? Mm-hmm. And, and like, and here's the thing: they were doing that already. Oh, oops! <laughs> like oh, they were already it. like setting that up does this fall like, into the anime problem of like the writers weren't confident enough that the the viewers would understand god and so just put it out no there i don't open. i don't i don't think it, i don't think it was that because what happens after that is oh. they uh-huh, okay. proceed to uh be murdered by one of the doppelgangers oh and uh, dude wakes up back at the beginning of the episode because it's a time loop. Oh, oh it's baby. also a time loop. <laughs> oh my god. Anime. You gotta love it. Stop Hit me if you've all... heard this one before. <laughs> god damn it. Hit all of you like modern day oh. supernatural thriller tropes in one go. Seek a way out. Uh. So, so it's no longer really becomes like a mystery thing and it's more like a I have to solve how to stop this or whatever and just like I don't, I don't want another time loop. I'm so tired of time travel. I'm so tired of, like, I don't know. Like, all the things that I feel like they just totally, like, erased all the things I was enjoying up until that part of the episode. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Time loops are hard to do. Like, a, like a good time yeah. loop story is actually fairly difficult to do because... Yeah. I do like time loops, but they I do too. Yeah. Yeah. bad. Yeah, I will point all... out um, one last kind of... This is sort of final nail in the coffin type of thing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and also fitting the vibe of a mid two thousands, early two thousands aero gay type situation. There's a lot of like weird, like completely random fan servicey stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> so like the beginning of the time loop is the dude like on the ferry to the island and like something right. happens where he jumps out of his seat and smashes his face in the boobs of the girl and the other uh-huh. side of the aisle. Oh, uh, so every time it loops again, he wakes up, it does the same yes. thing. Yes. So he goes, oh, uh, ah, and, and then jumps He loops the all yes. the time, and every time he sees panties twice, the world will explode. Yes. Whoa. There, oh there was God. another, yeah, oh there, were, there are other shots, there are a lot of <laughs> panty shots and stuff, too, that they work in for no reason. I almost feel like, <laughs> as, as crass as that head. is, done well, you could do some really funny, like, Groundhog Day like joke bit with that, right? <laughs> Where like by the sixth time it happens, he just doesn't care. Like, oh, I'm sure he's just stone face planting his face into those boobs, and then just moves on with like zero reaction. Okay, like, so uh... I, I the one thing the the only wild card left because I only watched the first episode. Yeah, they don't tell you in the first episode whether he remembers what happens or not. Oh, okay. it's ambiguous. So that's like the only other factor, and but I'm sure. It. And by now, episode's two out, so people know. But I don't know. I didn't watch it, so I don't know. Oh, okay. I care. Well, it doesn't sound like it has a solid enough foundation to follow. Even if like, even if there might be aspects of this mystery that are interesting, it seems like there's just not enough like, going on yeah. here to. Wouldn't it be yeah. worse if he didn't retain his memories? Because then well, you would you watch always... him just doing the same shit over and over again. Yeah, it, it, with that type of time loop, then it kind of depends on, like, the nature of, like... I mean, it just becomes endless eight, like... <laughs> right, and then the tension <laughs> is, like, what, like, smidgen... Like, what, what like... What butterfly flap will change Yes, what, yeah. what yeah. faint traces can they remember between right. the loops, but, like... Or you could, like, have it so he remember he remembers certain pieces or something. You know, yeah. There's ways you could do it, but... Or find that's already to probably a more behind or something, but that's already probably more thought I want to put further into this show. So yeah. anyway, well, too bad. just just too telling bad. everybody because it does look it it did like it was inter- it sounded interesting. They were doing good, and just I I was not on board by the end. All right, yeah, well, let's what about uh, the next move, one on the list? <laughs> let's, yeah. let's move on to uh, dance, dance, dancer. Uh-huh. Uh, excuse this me, is the I think one... you mean danseur. Danseur, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. excuse me. <laughs> I, d- I did take French in high school, actually. Um, the uh, This is the one that, if you squint, looks like uh, Welcome to the Ballroom. Um, oh, sure. boy. <laughs> but it is, okay. it, is, uh, it, it is about ballet. Can't, can't, evoke, can't evoke dancing anime. And, uh... Yeah. So well, lightly. I mean, they also have like the weird long <laughs> necks and stuff. That's oh, okay, sure. <laughs> but <laughs> more so than the dancing, I was thinking of the weird long necks. Yeah, uh, fair okay. enough. Um, so this was uh pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. so here here's the here's the approach I'll take on this. There have been several shows recently where people have been praising them for taking on toxic masculinity and gender norms and whatnot. Okay. Mm-hmm. I am looking at last season's uh, My Dress Up Darling and even this season, like, uh, Shikimori is not just a cutie, for example. Right. Um, and I would say that if you enjoy those elements in those shows, which um, I'll... I'll agree that they bring them up, <laughs> whether or not they do anything with them. They are present. They exist. <laughs> Sounds like the actual anime you should watch yes. is the 2021 darling Megalobox 2, Nomad. Well, oh yes. You, and also, uh, Dance 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 Air seems to be right. a much better take on the toxic masculinity angle. I don't even know if it's necessarily a new take or anything, but I appreciate that the the way they're so the way they're approaching this, and I'll I'll give the backstory. the The main kid, when he was like really little, like seven or eight or something like that years old, he he saw a ballet performance and got really into it and wanted to do ballet. But okay. as he was getting slightly older, you know, other kids and people were like, "Oh, you know, boys can't do ballet or whatever." Oh, is that was a like, ballet? You ought to be playing football. Yeah, and... This is a reference only British people will understand. <laughs> and, um, you know, there was 
there's this pressure because apparently his his dad who passed away used to be a Hong Kong movie martial arts stunt oh, player. Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, I don't know. That seems like a way cooler career path. I'm gonna be and, honest, not to be judgmental here. And his uncle, like, his I'm... uncle, his uncle teaches Jeet Kune Do, and they're like, "Why don't you go with your uncle and learn martial arts?" And yeah, I up... would say that too. To be honest, like, okay, <laughs> well, just just work. work I know with what me you're here. saying. I'm just saying if my, you know, like if someone's like, "Oh yeah, your dad like hung out with Bruce Lee in Hong Kong back in the day," <laughs> that seems I... all right. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, they're not saying those things are bad. The point is, like, everyone's no, know, like, oh, because you are a boy, you should be doing yes. these things. And the kids are making fun of him, like, oh, girls, only girls do ballet, you know. And um, I think what I appreciate is rather than this, like, making him some sort of, like, ostracized loner or whatever, like, he actually just buys into it. And you can see when they skip ahead a few years later, he's kind of like, <laughs> he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> like he's, <laughs> he's like, so, so he's, he's popular. He has a lot of friends. He's doing like soccer. He's doing his martial arts. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves him, but you know, he's kind of a jerk. His friends are, are the class bullies. Like he's uh-huh. part of the class bullies. And like, he, you know, he, he the show then becomes he has to like deprogram himself <laughs> <laughs> and because he's still in his heart he still wants to do ballet but like he, he's been ex- after you uh-huh. know years se- several years and he's still supposed to be pretty young he's still supposed to be like 14 or something sure but after a few years you know those are very impressionable years and after a These few kids years are lanky that, for 14 year olds but... <laughs> yeah um and so, you know, things change be, because, you know, the the pretty girl in class takes an interest in him because she thinks mm-hmm. he would be good at ballet. And mm-hmm. uh, she tries to get him to to study with her hot mom, who is a ballet instructor. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so he has to kind of, like, undo the toxic masculinity rather than, like, I guess, deal with it from everybody else. And this kind of culminates with the the latest episode, episode three, which I thought was pretty good, where the the kind of third main character, because it's him, the girl, and then her like cousin, who's like the ice cold dancing machine uh-huh. robot super guy. Always super always got to have one. Yep. Yeah, and and like his deal is like at the studio, he's like super cool and intimidating, but it's he doesn't know anything other than ballet so when he goes to school he's the one that, that's like getting bullied right right, right. he's the airhead and, and this guy is a bully his friends are the bullies right <laughs> and he's kind of like in this position where like he has to like decide am i going to stand up for what i want to do with my life or am i just going to keep playing along with everybody and, and they handle that all really well to the point where at the end of the episode he has to like basically like tell his friends look this is what I want to do and you know they all cut him off like they they end with him showing him getting kicked out of the group chat um damn whoa yeah and the worst so, thing that can happen to a 14 year old you know I I, I I don't know how much of that is going to be like a factor in the rest of the story like I feel like maybe now from here on once now that his head's clear it's going to be more like a traditional gamba ray my way to the top of a uh, ballet world right. type of deal or they all get isekai and he will get a cheat skill that he will use to oh, show them all. <laughs> uh, but um, but no, I I mean, those those things sound pretty simple and straightforward, but I feel like they actually handled them when you watch it, like the way it's written, the way the characters are developed. Like I feel like it was handled really well, and not just like a topic that was sh- shoehorned in with you know whatever else the show is doing, and. Uh, you know, not actually saying anything about it, which is, yes, shots fired at those other two shows I mentioned. But, <laughs> uh, well, but yeah, it's admirable because they're not just doing it and doing it for like quote unquote brownie pounds, but points, but also because they're not not making it to like the standard thing of like I need to overcome my, you know, my limitations and expectations, and they actually address the the like 
what that means to him on a more fundamental level. Like I'm com I'm comparing this to something like Blue Period, which is also like this delinquent kid discovers his interest in something that is not seen as traditionally masculine, in this case art. But there it is just sort of used as a like standard shonen anime overcome your limits and mm -hmm. achieve right. your dreams kind of thing. Whereas here those limits he have to he has to overcome or at least somewhat acknowledged and play a role in his development. If that makes yeah. sense. I think this was a much more like realistic take on it because I mean we're all kind of because of the way society is, we're all kind of programmed that way, right? Like mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you have to like and it, yeah, I, I you have to kind of deprogram yourself sometimes right. and that's that's that I feel like that's a much more realistic take and it felt more natural to me than um you know, the way some other shows handle it. So it was definitely better than Blue Period. <laughs> I'll take shots at that show too. I'm I'm shooting at everybody today. Uh, what do you mean? So. My problems can be solved by a manic pixie dream girl Is who is also hot. <laughs> this next show on our list. All right. Yes. So that that was good. I'd recommend checking that one out if that sounds interesting. Um, let's talk about a couple of cuckoos. Okay. So to refresh everyone's memory, this is the. Uh, anime comedy with the horrible premise, but I'm only watching it because it was written by the author of Yamada Kun and the Seven Witches. Oh, okay. Which also had a horrible ah, premise, right. but yes. turned out to be pretty good. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I would did not enjoy this one as much as uh, <laughs> okay. her previous yeah, efforts. I mean, sometimes that's how it goes. <laughs> you, you, it's like you fly you fly too close to the sun here. You're eventually going to get burned. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this had like every misunderstanding that you could cram into an anime uh, romantic comedy oh, wow. into I mean like the the classic like harem romantic comedy is making a big comeback isn't it like we have like the quintessential quintuplets and now this one as well which are like the most like milk toast possible like rom-coms where a dude has a yeah. bunch of girls chasing after him. Well, here's the thing. There, there is some. So, okay, let me. I'll backtrack a little bit. the The thing I liked about Yamada Kun and the Seven Witches is that the main couple and really all the characters were actually pretty well written and likable, and the main couple had like actual good chemistry together. Mm -hmm. Like, right. And it, even though it was like technically a, a harem anime, it, it kind of. It's a it's a Bake Monogatari where the main guy starts off with a girlfriend, but other girls still try to get into his pants. <laughs> not even, not even that far. Like, like he's really not like into the other girls at all. Like, he, Bake Monogatari is like a whole other thing. But the, just that um, the supporting cast is all is all cute girls. They all happen to be yeah, yeah. cute girls that are into him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <LA> sucks. <laughs> yeah. So my. I mean, my point my point was uh, that 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 does carry over in this where I do kind of I do like the main characters um but the 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 premise is just like so dumb and there's so much like really stupid things you have to like wade through and ignore to get to the good stuff that it's not worth it so I'm gonna try to like recap at least some of what's going on because yeah, you you've, you've said this premise is bad a few times but I don't know yeah. what the premise is so there, there's this there's this, there's this guy and a girl. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I'm gonna try to remember this. Revolutionary. Tell me more. They, on the day they are born, they're accidentally switched at birth. Oh my! Right. This is coming back to me now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The, <laughs> so the guy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was supposed to be born into this rich upper class uh -huh. family, and he okay. gets switched with this girl who's supposed to be born into this like mid to lower class family that are former, where the parents are former delinquents. Okay. Like. Okay. They've got the, the the biker jackets and everything. Yeah. Um, All right. And so okay. they get switched. Uh huh. And so he 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 grew, as he grows up, he is very like smart and studious and very reserved. And he's like, man, it's almost like I don't belong in this family. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And you know, well, she's we, much we really more... doing some nature versus nurture shit. Yeah. Here, she, huh? She's she's yeah. like. Yeah, and she's like very know, outgoing, how, and she's like a social media that. star, and <laughs> okay. all this. Anyway, so they happen to meet one day on the street, ah. and okay. uh, you know, 
he, this is uh, on the he day that, strangers, I believe, right? Yes, total strangers. They meet like on a bridge, and you know, uh-huh. as you do in anime, uh-huh, and uh-huh. um, on the day that he is supposed to meet his new his real family, because apparently they figured out that there was a mix up at this point. And okay. he is they he is supposed to meet his real somehow. family today. And she is supposed to meet the man she is betrothed to marry. Oh my. And can you guess <laughs> Are both who of she is these betrothed to marry? <laughs> By any okay. chance? So Why would they... she be betrothed to marry oh, uh, because to keep it in the family, I see. Yes. Understood. So they're like, well, you know, we, we had this mix up. And, how convenient for you us. Know, how can we all still be a family? Because, you know, we've we've grown up together for 16 years. You're just like my real family. Oh, what if you two just get married and then we'll all be one big family? I don't think that's the solution. But, hmm. <laughs> and I'm, so I'm, now, you know, I'm fucking looking at the, I'm looking at the manual here and it's like, well... It doesn't say a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> yes. That's how you end up with a dictatorship. Right. <laughs> so the, the episode ends with them moving in together and now engaged to be married, uh, only to reveal that, uh, well, he he actually has a crush on his uh, intellectual rival at school who mm, he's trying to get better oh grades my. than. And also, he, oh, it I'll also ends... Someone. It also ends with his uh, his now n- fake sister being, huh, I guess we're not really siblings. Oh, man. Oh, Definition, oh, definitions of incest in this state are loose. And there it is, folks. I told you <laughs> we would get to, <laughs> we'd get to the incest. <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? Rip, off, oh. like, rip off the paper, erase the whiteboard. The, yeah. We have gone zero days without <laughs> a oh, man. blood related. That's so good. That's so good. I, I, I fucking... Oh, Fuck man. me. And, well, and perfect. Anyway. Like, that, that last detail is... <clears throat> The piece de resistance, like it's the cherry on top. It's yeah. You can still like make this shit, like right. I, I don't know. Like okay. I'm sure yeah. it's so fine. there, there like, were wanna, there, like I said, I there were things I liked, but work. they do not outweigh all that no. I just went through. There's too much, too much to ignore, and just my goodness, that's so my funny. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> It really is like she took out a book that's like how to write a horror manga and like uh, opened up it up on a random page and be like, the guy's little sister must have a crush I mean, on him. Is this the equivalent of like, how, hear me out here, for a while there, shooters were all World War Two shooters. Yes. Right? And then for <laughs> okay. a while there they weren't. And then now, you know, somebody puts out World War Two shooter and newer people enter New people who have uh, entered the hobby more recently will be like, "Wow, this is what a what a wacky and novel setting." Uh, <laughs> this is like a, this is what they call a boomer shooter, right? It has Sorry, been a while like, since you know, we. It's like, yeah, I mean, this show regards, does feel at least ten years wrong, old, right? Like, you know, media is a revolving door, mm-hmm. and you're always getting new fans, right? Exactly. Like, it's a, it's a thing we talk about with Pokemon, right? There will always be a right. new generation of small children who want to collect monsters. Mm-hmm. and There will always be a new generation of horny teens who want to fuck their yes, sisters. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Thank you for finishing that thought for me, Aqua, so I didn't have to say it out loud because that's exactly where I was going. All right. I think on that note, we can move on. Yes. Get oh, Osana. good. Just get an Osana Najimi instead. Thank goodness. Thanks for oh, saving oh, us from that. We, we, we get to move on to <laughs> my <So>. favorite topic. <laughs> that, 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 that concludes, that concludes our, our new shows. And we're going to bring get back some fireworks, ones. Guys, it's time for <laughs> geopolitics. Yes, the, the geopolitics <laughs> power <laughs> hour. <laughs> Are you oh, ready for God. me to talk about the dangers of nationalism? Oh. <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> we, we warned everybody last time this would be coming, so. We're back, baby. Uh, Let's talk about the return of, uh, Kyokai Senki, or oh, whatever it's actually. Man, you guys must be line. really excited about this show. <laughs> you can't keep a good pundit down. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> so, uh, 
What's uh, what's going on with Kyokai Senki? Uh, Maybe nothing. Kyokai Senki has a Patreon where you can pay it to shut up forever. Fucking nothing. I'm not even uh, joking. It is the most uh -huh. substanceless, flat, like, <laughs> just non-existent show on the goddamn just planet. Just nothing in that show has any reason for why any of it should happen, I would say. It's... Uh, <sighs> Okay, it's like what they, we come into new season. They're like, yes. it's been eight months. Right. The Americans have started developing better automated AI for their a uh, main robots. Yes, <clears throat> and now they've gotten a territorial advantage, and the line at the border, the border lines of Japan keep shifting. Uh, and so, and mind you, to remind you, the show has never stated. Why Japan is the new proxy war? Like, is the location? is is the yeah. primary arena for the modern proxy wars of this setting? I mean, that's like, clearly we, because Japan is objectively the coolest country in the planet, and I'm everyone not, wants it. Aqua, you might be joking. <laughs> I think that's actually Kyokai Senki's thesis. Yeah, is why <laughs> wouldn't you up. want to colonize yes. Japan? Of right. course, everyone yeah. wants to have yeah. Japan. So, you know, Japan. that yeah. small island nation with no natural resources. Uh, but it has enemy. Yep. So you know all the uh, the resistance has it even harder than before, and all those innocent villains are just getting caught up. And, in and the as a reminder, at the end of season one, Amo, the protagonist, seemingly died in his clash with Ghost, the the rogue he, AI. He was literally self-destructed. Yes, the mech literally exploded. But he's back. He's back, and his mech is black. For like ten seconds, <laughs> he's back, and now he's edgy. He's got the dead eyes. He wears black. Ah, he, how truly he, unprecedented! He's serious now. I'm so fucking mad they couldn't even commit to making his mech black for more than an episode. Right, it like <laughs> it's like a stealth coating that peels off. Right, right? Like, like it shows up with now black and red instead of white and red, and you're like, oh man, now it's for real. And then it just turns out it's yeah, it's just like fucking. Is this like yeah, um, stealth on it or whatever? Yeah, is this like Spider-Man Three? Toby Maguire getting the uh, symbiote for like oh, ten man. minutes. I was just about to say this is gonna be like Spider-Man's black suit, Except where like, like he gets the black suit and then everyone likes it so much. So even after the symbiote oh, leaves him, he just God. gets a like cloth I black wish. suit. <laughs> but no, it's like there for like funny. all of like ten seconds just to like make you wonder what's going on, and then it just immediately switches back to its or scheme. Uh -huh. from was this one. just to make another kit they could sell? Oh, man. Yeah, you know what? If they sell that as a P Bandai kit in like that makes sense. three months, it wouldn't surprise yeah. me. Uh, Anyways, yep. it's just like it's it's unbelievable, just like how fucking like nothing this show is. Yeah, like I don't want to say toothless because in some regards, this show is in fact trying to say something, and <laughs> it's just trying to say something like deeply nationalist, but also it's really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so, like, the primary conflict of the beginning of Season 2 that, like, brings Amo back into the fold and, like, reveals he's alive is that uh, the NAC, right, the, the North American Coalition, uh -huh. is uh, chasing some refugees oh, God, who are fleeing right. from yet another, yet another idyllic, traditional Japanese town uh -huh. that definitely, like... Is being is, is definitely having photos taken of it and being posted on Instagram with captions like "Remember what they took from you" and stuff like that. <laughs> Reject um, modernity, embrace yes, tradition. Embr <laughs> yes, embrace tradition. Oh anyway, so these refugees flee. Uh oh, directly into the camp of the resistance, uh -huh, and, and there was because the resistance are such good guys who would never ever uh -huh. do anything Abandoned bad. Civilians. Yeah, yeah, always helps. Yes, would never abandon civilians. So they take them in. Uh -huh. And they try to uh, when when the when the North American when the American like mechs show up, basically try to broker a deal. Uh, basically saying, hey, like, you know, our you know this world's Geneva Convention equivalent states that like you have to like let civilians like uh -huh. leave a battlefield oh, safely, no. right? And in typical fashion, the beady-eyed, elf-eared American commander again. Uh -huh. We Wait, talked about like the weird, elf? the weird prominence of like pointy ears in Kyokai Senki to denote like evil. Yeah, is, is this back because they two? can't show the evil guys having pointy noses? I don't, I don't know. know. It's but, weird. Uh, it's so uh, weird. They paid off one of the refugees. okay. So here's that thing that actually bothers me. Let, let, let me start from the beginning, yeah. right? So 
The initial tension, of course, is that the North American are stating on the surface, well, we can't tell the difference between refugees and terrorists, right? How can we, like, take you at your word, right? And for a second there, it's almost <laughs> like, ah, okay, the actual, like, tension here is going to be... Because during this whole time, the refugees are saying, like, we should fire back. Like, fuck these guys, let's not flee. Let's just, like, stick with the rebels and, like, take up arms and fight back. And the resistance is like, no, you fools, that's going to get you fucking killed. Like, stay a non-combatant, and they'll let you leave here peacefully, right? And so there's almost a tension of, like, ah, uh, mankind is its own worst enemy, right? Someone's going to fire a shot, and then, like, negoti- <laughs> negotiations are going to break down. And then it does happen. A member of the Japanese refugees opens fire on the American robots. And initially, you're, you're almost like, ah, see, so there is a little bit of moral ambiguity to this situation. Until it's realized, no, that was just the one bad Japanese who was paid off by the Americans ahead of time to to, to commit a false flag operation uh-huh. to justify opening fire on the rest of the, the populace. And in typical fashion, the bad Japanese is given what a traitor deserves, which is a summary execution by the Americans now that he's outlived his usefulness. In case you forgot that, you know, these foreign <laughs> occupiers are the, are the bad guys who will be ousted from glorious Nippon. Real, real subtle. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so... I, I, I was fucking losing my mind because it's like, you actually have an almost halfway decent plot line here and you still can't help yourself. Uh, it's just, um, just a screen flashing with the text, this is what the LDP actually believes. Like, yes, <laughs> right, basically. Uh, and so it ends ugh. with, like, the Resistance is about to get wiped out by the superior yeah. American robots. Amo shows up, he fucking He's kills them dead. all effortlessly. Uh-huh. And then, like... Right. The last thing we saw is like, oh man, it's it's get, like what almost changed because yes, uh, uh, he kills now. He he kills the oh, commander. Shit. Uh, uh, There's the pre- whole song and dance, which is by a slim margin the most interesting thing the show has done so far. I would say yes, where it is. Amo like he cuts open the dude's cockpit and he's like, well, if you leave, I'll let you leave if you want, and. Of course, Americans like, I'll never surrender! I'm gonna kill all you Japanese! <laughs> and then Amo just, you know, stabs through the cockpit. And yes. everyone's like, oh, Amo, you've gone so far! Now right, you kill me people! You, these, these resistance fighters who have are actively participating in armed resistance against their occupiers are like, we never kill! We don't ever go that far! <laughs> it's like, oh my god. God, just like when Code Gias has like eight times the nuance now and I'm moral ambiguity. Now I, that's like, this is like the actual reason why everyone uses unmanned, right? And it's only yes. the resistance that uses the man robots. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to realize is so they can be like morally clean of sh- yes. shooting back. Yes. Oh my it's, god, <sighs> it's literally the only reason. Like it's. Yeah, I just I can't I just can't believe this show exists like this. Like, it's, I, I, they're not even I, remotely. Like, this is apples and oranges as it gets. But we're gonna talk about another show on this list that is being handled by, you know, the studio formerly known as Sunrise, <laughs> and it's insane how much better the writing in a different Sunrise show is compared to this one. <laughs> like, it's insane that these two people could work at the same company. Yeah, I always forget to. You, you guys are talking about this like serious situations here, and that, like all the characters look like they're like from a Saturday morning kids. Oh yeah, like they they're, like they're from Gundam oh, yeah. Build Fighters, and they have their right. fucking Digimon right. navvies. Yeah, I find that hilarious. Um, well, propaganda starts at childhood. Uh, this my... is the show that like I think if like I wasn't doing it for the podcast would actually finally break our Gundam Build Divers rule of like, <laughs> oh, this is actually worse than Gundam Build Divers, a show Eero and I watched to completion. Not, like, this uh, is what it takes to get us to drop a mecha anime. Like, I, that's I'm, not, I'm not holding bag. the gun to your head, guys. <laughs> this is the... Is this the price of smiles? <laughs> oh, we can't, we can't get into that again. Let's, but let's, see, let's... here's the thing. 
because of the next show on this list we're about to talk about, it's really Ooh. funny to put these two together. Uh, okay, mm. yes. Ah, this other let's, show. Let's get to the back half of our geopolitical power hour here. <laughs> and the, the triumphant return. Uh-huh. Do you know why Tay Jay's back? Let's go back to yes. this back. The, legend, the remake of the luxury 1980. Yes, the like legendary OVA. 2018 science mm. fiction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Legend of the Galactic OVA. Heroes is <laughs> or, Legend yes, of the Galactic Heroes is Jesus back on the Glorio uh, the Glorio <laughs> Network. Here. Uh, man, um, yeah. So, uh, so where where are we at in the timeline? Season two of the OVA. So, um, a very important character to Reinhardt. Von Lohengram has passed away. Was that um, the e- was that the end of the previous season? season? One. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Yang has prevented the coup. Yep. Uh That was led by um, Frederica's father. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yeah. And both both sides are kind of licking their wounds and yes. gearing up for hostilities to resume. Yes. And uh, it's kind of where we start, right? With sort of um, it kind of opens up with like Jell, you'll remember this is uh. They are beginning the arc of building up Julian Minchie as, you know, sort of the the grand inheritor of the FPA's ideals. Right. You know, he is learning strategy from Yang, combat mm-hmm. from Shen Kopp, uh, piloting from Poplin. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, he is, he is becoming <laughs> the, the great, the, the gestalt being of liberal democracy. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm. Um and meanwhile, on the Empire side, uh, we have once again the return of the grandest minds of Empire technology, which amounts to the mm-hmm. SpongeBob bit where Patrick Starr says, "What if we took our intergal- intergalactic <laughs> fortress and moved it over here?" Uh-huh. <clears throat> well, uh, we are, as we know, Isolone Fortress is, uh, you know, right in the middle of the only path through the galaxy the only traversable yes. space and it is undefeatable because mm-hmm. it's us our wonderful empire technology those fpa dogs stole it from us so if we take our other fortress and push it in front of the own fortress fortress v fortress yes so we are basically in the early stages of season two where right the fpa and the, well, more like the Empire is mobilizing for a grand uh-huh. offensive, and the FPA is like licking its own asshole uh-huh. for like <laughs> right. the seventh time. Um, democracy, democracy, oh, it's it's great. <laughs> How small okay. of a margin did that fascist <clears throat> lose that French election today by? <laughs> Oh immediately God. dating this podcast. It yes. was forty two percent. Forty two. Jesus Christ, that's terrible. Uh, uh. Yeah. Anyways, to get it back on track, uh, um, it's it's Legend of the Galactic Heroes. It's uh-huh. it's you know it is D and T. It is the maybe slightly less, you know, it, it is the slightly less intelligent adaptation of that original <laughs> novel, but it makes up for it in you know still being that classic story with those characters and those moments. I, I was and, thinking of it as like the colder, more emotionless anime version of it versus the OVA, but... Yeah, that's a, that's a kind of another way, good way to put it, yeah. is... The OVA was willing to, in, in, to engage in a sort of theatrics that often sometimes veered into melodramatic in a way that fe- fit the sort of space opera milieu, right. whereas DNT often feels more like, you know... Like a maybe like a an HBO or Netflix like you know right. TV adaptation right. of that same. It's Tim, Tim Burton's Batman versus Christopher Nolan's Batman. Perhaps yes, <laughs> yeah, uh, and right. But you know, it's still fun to see those characters. It is still yeah. fun to have Yang Wen Lee back in our good graces, yes. talking about how you know soldiers are the worst class of human being alive. <laughs> Uh, you know, just <laughs> reminding you that fucking nobody drops bombs harder than Yang, Yang Wen Li, Yang Wen Li the magician, <clears throat> Yang Wen Li the the source of disease, Yang Wen Li, what was it, the hero of um, hero of Alpha Seal, Alpha Seal, F- fan fiction prompt: What if Yang Wen Li met Big Boss? <laughs> 
<laughs> Who knows? Man, I'm not sure actually how that would go. <laughs> uh, would Yang Wen Lee get drawn in by Big Boss's animal magnetism? <laughs> Or <clears throat> or would he see through that strongman dictatorship that uh-huh. Big Boss has in his mind's eye? But, ha- yeah, it's, it, you know. Have there been any, like, notable differences from the OVA in this section? I mean... Aside from Mecklinger's uh, long hair. It's, and his slightly it's a thing of, like, I, I, it's been just long enough since we watched the OVA that I cannot remember, like, moment to moment like lines of dialogue and like right scenes nothing nothing will, major then mm-hmm. no I, I would say the main difference with dnt is once again it is sort of a for better and for worse it is more willing to be um <clears throat> explicit and gratuitous in the subtext it is dealing with right and as a result sometimes that works in its favor because there will be scenes that in the OVA were just sort of dryly delivered by the narrator. And then right. DNT's version will actually show those actions being, you know, committed by, you know, the people responsible. And so in some regards, it's, it's less subtle. It's definitely kind of right. more blunt in the way it tells its story. Yeah. But in some regards, maybe that works for certain types of moments. Right. Like an example I'll bring up is like, so, D- so DNT just recently covered the Mittermeier flashback, right? Of how Mittermeier and Roenthal uh, meet Reinhardt, yeah. right? And in the OVA, it's just mentioned that Mittermeier is being imprisoned because he executes two officer. Uh, he executes an officer with um, important royal connections uh, for right. committing war crimes during a campaign. Yeah, and. It's sort of just kind of you're just sort of told that by the narrator. In D and T, we are explicitly shown this that soldier, this, yeah. this officer like slitting the throat of a civilian woman, and like, you know, uh, uh, uh it, right. doing and then, bad and then shit. Mittermeier like shooting him, Ugh. and then Mittermeier just fucking kills the dude like in fucking cold blood right then and there. Executes him on the spot, mm-hmm. and in some regards, it's maybe blunter than it needs to be, but in some regards, maybe that better communicates right. certain aspects of that universe, because I think for better or worse, and we can't get into this right now, but, like, I think there are people who watch the original OVA, and sometimes because actions and, and narrative moments are told through the narrator rather than rather than portrayed explicitly, it leads to people sort of, like, not having recognizing those moments... Right. Yes, having different interpretations, right? Right. Like, the OVA somehow manages to be accused of both... <laughs> being too dry being... and too gratuitous. Like... Yeah, well, not only that, but the OVA somehow manages to be accused of being both uh, um, monarchist propaganda <laughs> by people on both ends of the political spectrum, <laughs> basically. Right. Like, somehow you have both, like reactionists, reactionaries and leftists saying the OVA is too nice on monarchy and empire and I don't know, I feel like we've talked about this in our uh, our hit podcast Legend of the Glory of Heroes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where I think we all arrived at the conclusion that that is very much not the OVA's deal, but somehow people still arrived at that conclusion, and I think right. throughout most of the run of the podcast, we struggle to try to understand why people would arrive at that conclusion yeah and watching DNT sort of makes me realize, oh, it's because a lot of the bad shit the Empire did in the OVA is sort of just narrated. It's never, like, really, like, shown in your face. Right. And so right. DNT's willingness to just be like, yeah, here's Empire soldiers committing war crimes. Yes. In some regards, maybe that'll help better communicate that stuff to people who are not as perceptive right. to that in the original OVA. Right. Right. And it's also, I think... uh how, how am I going to put this? Because it's Legend of the Black Heroes, it, 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 I think people might get the wrong idea of this. I think the show is subtle enough to be like, as opposed to this soldier is an individual who's in the wrong and the Empire is good, it's closer to soldiers are doing this all the time and Mittermeier is... The, the one calling them out is the good one. This, right. right. Yes, yeah. that Mittermeier is the exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, no, I, that, make, that makes sense. Uh, 
that definitely makes sense. Well, also, <clears throat> DNT gives us a scene where Admiral Bittenfield uh, <laughs> orders a meal at a restaurant, and it's just a stereotypical meat on a bone. Yep, very funny. <laughs> and it's very. I think we funny. talked about this last time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we I think we talked about it off air, but I had to or bring it, it off air, uh, yeah. during the podcast. It's so funny. It's the yeah. funniest fucking shit in the world. <laughs> Fucking of course, guy. of course he would. Of course he would. Like next to fucking Mecklinger eating from his charcuterie plate. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. right. <laughs> well, still a lot, a lot of story left to tell. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. It seems like now that they're now that we are well into season two, mm-hmm. it feels like they're committed to it because right, they're initially... not cutting anything, right? They're, they're... <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Because initially, yeah. when DNT was first announced, I think we were all like. Oh, it's just going to be, like, a movie adaptation of, like, the big moments. It's going to, like, cut out everything, and, like, it's going to be, like, a weird, like, disjointed, like, adaptation of the story. But we're, like, in the weeds of (laughs) season two here. You know, we got, we got, we got, um, Adrian Rubinsky talking about tightening the thread on Young Wen Lee. Uh So, like, we are deep in it in a way that makes me feel uh, like... Paul Schumacher and, uh... Landsberg, the bungling poet. The bungling poet got introduced. Yes, so <laughs> well, it, it feels like they're they're gonna do it. Like they they might actually take this all the way to the conclusion. God knows how long that'll take. I mean, right. I, guess it I mean, took it'll almost t- ten years for. <laughs> it'll probably actual, take as yeah, long yeah. as the original OVA. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, talking about how the final season is a little bit disappointing in 2028. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, we'll, well, we'll speaking have, of we'll... geopolitics, who said the <laughs> geopolitics quarter was over? Not with our next show here. Oh, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Let's let's move on. And uh, this, I'm going to still say this is a very different direction. Let's talk about <laughs> Kaguya-sama, Love is War, Ultra Romantic. Um, season three, if you Ultra. will. Um, all right. I, I'm going to I'm going to I don't know if this is controversial. But I want to say, uh, oh yeah, episode two, mm-hmm. we had a little more focus on Kaguya's maid slash servant slash slave. Uh, I don't think it's slave. <laughs> <laughs> that might be going a bit far. She's comp- she's compensated for her time, I suppose. Uh, and um, is uh so in this episode she spends some time with Shiragane to mm-hmm. spy on him because Shiragane is going to a mixer, and there have been previous kind of hints of maybe something with I and Shiragane going on, and uh, Shiragane uh pursuing the wrong woman. <laughs> All I'm gonna say um, after that episode. Yeah. No, he's we... pursuing the woman he deserves. Well, maybe, that maybe I that's mean, true. I mean, I don't, you know, I feel like maybe people could have joked about this in Season 2. Are we actually going to get a Kaguya I Hayasaka love triangle in I, Season 3? Well, like, is that... To me, it kind of makes me think of, going? like... I know the know, answer, but... <laughs> yeah, Aqua, as someone who reads the manga, probably knows where this is going. But, um... I'm just saying, I felt like they they they, they work better than Chiragani and Kaguya, but maybe that's damn, just me. you're a, you're a convert. You've already been I, converted. I, I, you're not. I might be. I might be. You are no longer in in the Kaguya camp. You have you have switched camps. You're over here. So so like the the thing the thing with with Shiragane and Kaguya like it it's very much the thing of like with anime romances where you know they're obviously you know supposed to be together that's like the whole point of the show or whatever right but like if this were reality like your odds of like hooking up with your high school sweetheart and actually like getting married and being together forever are like astronomically low um as opposed to hooking up with your high school sweetheart's maids yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm just saying they have that kind of like no, I, so I actually like I'm joking, but they, I, they have that I, kind I totally of like get, cute high school relationship. I that, totally like, get what you're saying, Jell. Like really in a lot of ways, sense. like Kaguya and Sh- Kaguya and Shiragana, bleh, Kaguya and Shiragane almost suffer from like because their relationship is so like assumed to be the status quo. Right. That in some regards, the show doesn't really work that hard to like give them that much chemistry at this point because it's just right. it's just assumed to be the default, right? right it's just part right. of the status whereas, quo. Whereas once you introduce Ai Hayasaka and 
it's like suddenly the show is now like, well, shit, we actually we actually have to sell this, right? So we need to put in work to like give them a relationship dynamic, and it needs to contrast with Kaguya's, right? And and, and it, they have done that, and maybe it's just we haven't really gotten that in season three yet. It's been a while, but right, yeah. But um, it, it kind of makes it feel like they're actually working for it, which makes it almost feel more like authentic and believable in some regards. Right. Look, all I'm saying is. You know, when I was a teenager, there may have been times I was interested in somebody that I shouldn't have been with and maybe missed out on some opportunities, all I'm saying. <laughs> um, the thing is, I think the show is just so... Like, the show knows this. The show knows that Kaguya and Shirogane is, like, a given. And so yeah, it will right. spend a lot of time, like, developing more, like, convenient... Or convenient... Conventional uh, romances between the side characters. Like... Compare this to, like, Ishigami's big arc in, in last season, which is far more, like... Which is kind of like the show going out of its way to do, like, a more traditional rom-com story that doesn't start with both characters already being head over heels for one another. Right. And it will continue to do so. Oh. Yeah. Well, I would say that perhaps my point is also reinforced by the absolutely absurd season 3 ED... Which you see in yes. <laughs> yes. The just the 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 strangely accurate Starship Troopers. Yeah. So uh, a tribute. Interesting choice to go with Starship Troopers for the. I mean, Starship TV. Troopers is like one of those movies, like Leon the Professional, of like weirdly prominent in Japanese pop culture. God, Leon right. the Professional. Some like B or C list movie that we that somehow became like yeah. Like very really unprofessional, which led to led to Jean Reno being Onimusha three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, yes. I, you know, I, again, you know, I think I think the relationship stuff is definitely. I mean, as always, I think Kaguya Saba does a good job of like. As always, the interesting thing is like because these characters have such strongly defined personalities, and the show is never afraid to make any character like the butt of a joke. Right. The fun, a lot of the fun of it is then throwing different m matches or different characters into each other instead of the usual like combinations and then getting to sort of see the fun like, right right what happens know, when you mix a match that one also the cast. Yeah. where the characters who are not usually paired up with each other are suddenly paired up with each other what, and what comedy right. can you book from that exactly mm. like yeah. i mean hell you know we're talking about episode two episode two has the great bit where fucking um what's her name the girl the 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 rule the rules nerd you know shit. Ino and, and Ishigami, right? They're doing that fucking exercise of, like, say something nice about each other. Right. And oh, yes. Clean each other's <laughs> ears and do all these fucking, ex like, friendship-building exercises, and they just get increasingly more and more hostile. <laughs> right. Like, the well, fucking I love, bit I love where their... the pocky bit, and they're just fucking snapping it away from each other like rabid dogs. I, I love because, like, they're, they're kind of implying that they've both been, like, helping each other out behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah. So right. that, like, by the time they actually see each other, they resent each other <laughs> right because <laughs> they've been I mean, that also so gives rise to the very good bit in episode three where like ishigami's like you all hate me right and then they have to play the the yes, coin the, game yes the <laughs> right the, the truth or dare equivalent basically yeah. but uh also small little like stealth joke but like they 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 like tell you that they that he assumes that ino is the one who puts down i hate you while it's probably kaguya Right. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Oh man. Yeah. But um But uh Yeah, the 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 ED was r r ridiculous. The uh, a lot of I mean <laughs> Fujiwara's Michael Ironside is a sentence I would never... Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking good. Uttered. I, um, I just... Fantastic. And and again, to my point, I being... Uh, I don't remember the girl's name in the movie, but the better one. Um, <laughs> that yeah. dies, like, at yeah. some point, sacrificing herself in the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I know. Very... I feel like they, they very intentionally cast the Kaguya cast as Who, yes. those specific characters. The roles were chosen in, specifically. In Starship Troopers. I would point out they also reference the first ED a little bit. Yeah, yeah, with the the it's angel Kaguya and the and the yeah, because like the plane. first ED yeah. they were like f flying old timey planes and rescuing her from yes. like an airship. Yes, and they. So what is it going to be by se wait, so what is the ED going to be by season four? Then is it just going <laughs> to like? 
turns into like a I don't know basic instinct or some shit. <laughs> staying in Christ. staying in Paul Verhoeven uh, <laughs> territory. <laughs> uh, I think uh, all bets are off at this point, but um, right. But yeah, um, episode three kind of took more of a turn into focusing on the one only existing couple with one of the, with the side characters. Right. Right, yes, like the one somewhat functional couple or at least we thought was functional until this episode. Right. <laughs> which was um, which was good. I mean, it was nothing like I mean, I think this is this is, you know, that th- this bit is kind of more the joke about Kaguya and Eno's reactions to right. it. Right. Anything right. Since... I mean, this was a very like classic Kaguya sama episode, I think. But yeah. it just also shows that how even in episodes that are like basically filler, they put a lot of effort into maintaining continuity. Like that one shot yeah. of Shirogane practicing his rap. The yes, one shot of Eno listening to her hot boy ASMR. Yes. yes. When like... the when the uh, when the, the conversation starts getting a, a little uncomfortable, yeah. she's like scrambling yeah. for her headphones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, um... also shout out shout out to them doing the. Uh, the Arrested Development sad Charlie Brown walk music. Yes. With uh, oh, yeah. Maki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's good times overall. I do wonder if we're going to have, I'm assuming we're going to at some point hit an actual story arc. Cause you know, Oh yeah. I mean, it, I mean, in, in a lot of ways it feels like we are, I mean, we are building the cast once again, right? Mm-hmm. Like we are introduced to what, like Kaguya's second cousin removed or whatever. Twice removed. Right. Yeah. Or twice removed. Who is somehow or... also her niece, question mark? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, <laughs> old families but, uh, are weird. My, um, my young auntie situation. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, we, we are being... Glorio like we block being... deep cuts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah in, in, in the same way that, like, Ishigami was, you know, we, we, we introduced, you know, during the Ishigami arc, we were introduced to, like, the cheer club and all that mm-hmm, stuff, right? right? It feels like, once again, we are starting to slowly build up a cast for, like, an arc, or at least right. it seems like that. So. Right. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Good show. <sighs> All right. Let's move along and talk about Tiger and Bunny season two. Yeah, I have not watched about... this yet. G, I'm sorry, but uh. Oh man, you're letting me down here, Jill. I, I'm watching like seven shows right now. I know. Like, I know. I it's to... fine. Look, just just drop trim down. summertime render and cuckoos or whatever, and watch yes. this instead. I don't know, but yeah. uh. <laughs> Yeah, so this is so this is the well written Sunrise show, um, this season. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were talking about Birdie Wing. <laughs> Dude, come on! Man. Also, Sunrise. Well, you know, right? What, I guess that wrong. is Sunrise. Bandai Namco Christ, Pictures. It is Bandai Namco Pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm All right. sorry. Well, I guess this is just a Sunrise Power <laughs> Hour. Uh, yeah, Tiger and Bunny 2. Uh, so I'm watching it week to week. You know, it's all out there thanks to Netflix. But so I'm on episode three. Um, it's the thing of like Tiger and Bunny 2 is a little bit like Kaguya Sama of like it is a well made sequel to a show that people liked and is doing a good job of maintaining all of the traits and qualities that people liked about the first season are carrying over well into the second season. I thought so, you were gonna say it's a show about two people who are madly in love with each other, but refuse to. I mean to that admit too, it. and yeah, oh well, yeah, it's a lot of that too. Yes, lots of that, and um, like literally the second and third episodes are basically just about like roundabout ways of reminding you of Barnaby and Kotetsu's relationship. Just like, hey, remember like how fucking gay these two are, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, how much? How much? How many uh, times do they talk about eyelashes? Well, no eyelash talk this time, but uh, Barnaby did make Kotetsu uh, hold his pee-pee, mm, so, mm-hmm, uh, you know, that's that's going on. Okay. Uh, I will give more context on that later. Are they, gay, um, are they more or less gay than Bisco and Milo at this point? I mean, I guess neither of them have actually said the big Aishiteru, uh-huh. so, you know. Sure. I mean, Barnaby is basically... Kotetsu's daughter's new mom, so I guess you know. <laughs> ah, kinda, another ha. So they kind of skipped that. I, you know, so maybe they skipped the the confessions and just moved straight to domestic living. I guess. Um, right. I mean, isn't that the best kind of romance? The part where, like, <laughs> after many years, you realize, like, hey, I guess we're kind of like a couple, eh, aren't we? Yeah, I guess we are. Yeah. But yeah, so episode two and three, 
are kind of once again we're still kind of just like getting back into the groove of like what Tiger and Bunny is, right? So ti- so episode two kind of focuses a bit on the new characters, kind of the new generation. I'm going to be honest, I don't like them that much. They're just yeah, kind of like uh-huh, the new okay. kids on the block. And I'm but is it intentional act- that you're not supposed to like them? Uh. Is this like I, a I, is this like I a Superman so. in Manchester Black situation? I think so. They are they they do feel like they are un- uh, intentionally made to be sort of unlikable because nobody else in the cast really likes them. So I, I do think it's always an uphill battle when you introduce like a whole new yeah. cast into an existing. Right. It sort of feels like they just kind of want to do the like newbie like kind of plot line again, but now that like Barnaby is experienced, like, right. They, they kind of have to find someone new to do that with. Right, but which can be interesting, like right, and 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 episode two basically is about like what motivates people to become heroes, right, in in the world of Tiger and Buddy, and long story short, it kind of culminates in this moment at the end of episode two where Barnaby is being asked to like, hey, so why are you still a hero? Like you became a hero to get revenge for the guy who killed your parents, and I mean spoilers for season one, he got revenge for. For the death of his parents. And, you know, it's kind of just like kind of getting into like, you know, at this point, what is it that motivates him to still do good, right? And a lot of that is like Kotetsu's companionship, right? That could, that for all the shit that he gives Kotetsu for his like idealism and like altruism, that in a lot of ways it is the kind of guiding star that lets Barnaby stay on track and like commit, still commit to heroics, even though he has ostensibly accomplished his life's goal. Right. And it culminates in this really heartwarming moment uh, involving a brand of bottled water called PP water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, PowerPoint. See, uh, Kotetsu and Barnaby are being interviewed together. It's sort of like their, like, you know, mid-year evaluation, right? You know, <laughs> Couple Kotetsu is just, Kotetsu for Kotetsu is just a typical, damn old man, get your shit together. And Kotetsu's like, yeah, yeah, I know. And then for Barnaby, right, like, you could tell the conversation's about to get more serious, so Kotetsu, like, smartly smartly excuses himself from the room, says, ah, I, I'm thirsty, I'm gonna go get a drink, right? And so that's where Barnaby is allowed to, you know, give his one-on-one sort of confession about, like, how much Kotetsu means to him, right? It all culminates this moment where Kotetsu is waiting outside the building for Barnaby, right? And he's got two bottles of this branded bottled water called PP water. <laughs> And the label is prominently shown multiple times. Yes, it is PP water. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, he's got two bottles. He's drinking one by himself. And, oh, it's so good. Kotetsu sees Barnaby's coming out of the building. And he sees that Barnaby has also bought two bottles of PP water <laughs> to share with Kotetsu. <laughs> so Kotetsu oh. hurriedly hides the bottles that he oh. bought. So that when Barnaby's like, hey, man, thanks for waiting. I got you a bottle of water. Uh, Kotetsu plays it because, oh, shit, thanks, man. I was pretty thirsty. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and so they share Barnaby's PP water together. That's cute. But as as they walk off into the distance, Barnaby sees in the corner of his eye the two stuffed bottles of PP water that Kotetsu bought in his back pocket. He wistfully smiles, and the two walk off into the night together. <laughs> It's very heartwarming. Uh, it's yeah. actually Aww. very. It's very yeah. heartwarming. It's also funny as hell because I'm sorry. The water is called pee pee water. <laughs> uh, well, I can't believe got... it's not unintentional. Uh, uh, they got to share their pee pees. Um. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then episode three. I'm sorry. I, I went long there, so I'll keep this one short. But episode three is sort of getting back to. Um. So in this season. After the huge success of Tiger and Bunny's, like, du- you know, te- team up, you know, duo, right? All the heroes are now um, doing the buddy system, right? Everybody is a, t- is a duo. It's team ups all season, right? And uh, Blue Rose is teamed up with a guy who was introduced in the movie who's known as Golden Ryan. And uh, he has gravity powers. And uh, he's kind of just a jerk. He's just a dick. He's a likable dick, though. He's like. I don't know. He's he's kind of got like screaming phoenix killer vibes but less murderous. Okay. Like he's just a really arrogant jackass but in a way that's super likable. Right. And uh so he's having friction because he's teamed up with Blue Rose and like 
it's like the most obvious like corporate pair up because they're the both like they're the two like conventionally attractive heroes so they're just paired together but they have like zero actual like chemistry or synergy and they fucking hate each other's guts like the best that they can manage is that like cold rhymes with gold Mm. and so they're just trying to workshop phrases (laughs) but it's really not working because they're all super fucking lame right and um it all culminates in this great bit at the end of the episode where like Ryan is convinced that Blue Rose is going to break up with him and form a new hero partnership with uh with Kotetsu with Tiger because Blue Rose has invited Kotetsu to go visit a sick fan who is a fan of both Blue Rose and Kotetsu and so they're going to be doing the like you know, make a wish foundation thing at the hospital. <laughs> right. And so they're talking about making plans to go surprise this kid and how they're going to go in costume. Right. And they're talking about this in like the exercise room. And the whole time they're talking about this, uh, the big buff dude, rock bison is like exercising really loudly next to them. <laughs> like making a lot of like really loud grunt noises. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um... And it's in, 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 in all of this gold, Ryan is like spying on them and trying to eavesdrop on the conversation. But because mm. of Rock Bison's grunting, uh-huh. only catches smidges of the conversation uh-huh, uh-huh. and puts together the least like charitable like interpretation of the events, and then relates this to to Barnaby, and he's like, "Barnaby, they're gonna break us up. <laughs> Our partners are cheating on us." And so you get the fucking date stalking yep. subplot. Do, 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 do the oh, they're like poking stat. their head out of the bushes. Yeah, poking their head out of the bushes. Is this just a fucking married couple sitcom? Like... It's so good. It's so <laughs> fucking good. Like, it's so funny. Yeah, the forget Tiger the superhero Bunny angle. Yeah. Has just fully embraced that it is a married couple sitcom, except that they're superheroes. And they also actually love each other, which is usually yes, not the yes, case. Yes, yes, that too. And it's just like, I'm like, oh man, this fucking show. Like, it knows exactly what it's doing, and it's it's a lot of fun. And That's great. I don't know, I guess, like, there's these, like, two, like, evil-looking femboy twinks, like, fucking, like, leering ominously off of rooftops, and I think they're going to be, like, the main villain of the, of the season. And they show for, like, two minutes every episode to, like say ominous shit about what they're gonna do to the heroes but i don't care fuck them i'm just here <laughs> for tiger and bunny's marital woes yes married Fantastic. with heroes yeah i always enjoyed the those aspects a lot more than when the show actually got serious and fought villains like right uh you know but good times i'll i'll, I'll try and get there eventually i, I would definitely recommend it. I, I think it's just i wouldn't call it you know, a gag comedy on the same level as, like, some of the other shows we're talking about, but, like... Yeah. I think it, it, it kind of it, it, it kind of brings its own important vibe to, you know, this already crowded season full of good comedies, because... Yeah. I mean, comedy was always a strong element for Tiger and Bunny, like, that's... Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, think I, I wouldn't necessarily leave... describe it as a comedy, but it was always a very yeah. big part of it. Exactly. Kind of just, like, always kind of, like, nailing that sort of workplace comedy vibe. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Also, the one one redeeming quality of Golden Ryan uh, is that he very much dotes on his pet iguana. Like, he, <laughs> okay. He loves his pet iguana. Uh, there's a shot of everybody's like cubicle in the hero office, and you know, like Kotetsu's got like a picture of his daughter and his dead wife. And then Golden Ryan's desk just has pictures of his iguana. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> is this like a? Uh... The ranking of kings OP with um with the no snake, snake yeah. kind and of holding yeah, yeah. His snake like there's a dramatic there's a like there's a there's a wistful scene in episode three where a, Ryan a parents is like love. where for for all of Ryan's like you know his 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 swagger about how he doesn't care about what anybody thinks of him when he's like legitimately worried that Blue Rose is gonna break up their hero partnership he's like caressing his iguana he's like oh iguana you're the only one who gets me <laughs> that's good. That is good. Man, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer are looking pretty good. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's another topic for another time. All right. Let's move along. Let's talk about Birdie Wing Golf Girl Birdie Story. Wing. Apparently part of the Madlax Cinematic Universe. Yes. <laughs> we, we didn't Feet discuss that last time. I didn't know last time. Uh, 
as the the uh the fake european country that they're in uh nefris is apparently the fake fake european country in 2004's uh girls with guns anime mad lax mm-hmm. uh so and i same think there's actually i i missed it right? but i think there's a third anime that writer worked on oh yes i saw that, that too also, apparently this is also referenced in uh <laughs> no, 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 I um, wish. Va- Valkyrie, Valkyrie Drive Mermaid, so oh softcore, f- softcore porn classic Valkyrie show. Drive yeah. Yeah. Mermaid. Yeah, so all three of these shows take place in the same setting. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Very different shows. But uh, anyway, um, episode two and three of Birdie Wing did kind of dial it down a little bit, it unfortunately. Down, yes. Yeah. Which is what we were kind of expecting. They do do well, some uh, golf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing about the show is like with... it constantly gives me the feeling of like they're holding back. You know, it needs to be crazier. It needs to be more like driving home those cliches. It needs to be yeah. more over the top every single time. I'm like you're holding back. You're holding back. And then every single episode, there's like one moment that makes me like okay, right. this show is okay. <laughs> that's, that's definitely kind of it's how like... I feel about it. Is like. They still have at least have like one crazy right, thing that happens. Right, right. Every, every, every episode, like it's it's like they know enough to like to like yeah to tease you with like one or two moments per episode where it fucking takes off the weighted like the weighted gloves mm-hmm. you know and like goes fucking super fucking ridiculous again. Right, like Eve but, is it gonna join, me, but it makes me Eve wonder join how in on the but, uh... joke they actually are. I like. It, that's the sort of hard thing to tell at this point, right? It's because right. episode one was so was like manic, was so fucking manic and deranged <laughs> that like I think we were all convinced that this show has to be has to know what it's doing, right? Right. But episode two and three kind of returned back to a almost more conventional sports story again in a right. way that is not it, necessarily bad, but is definitely not the main appeal of the show. Yeah, it's and, starting to remind me of Seiren in that it is like I, there's. Mm. So, there is something vaguely off about it, but like does, in, a, in does some not kind sound of like it is written by humans. In no. some kind of weird parallel universe, this would be considered a very normal sports show. <laughs> I, think in, I yeah. think in some ways it kind of is a normal sports show. In like, of, it's like of that it ilk, I right? Mean, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. nowhere yeah. near as direct as I read. Like. Like many yeah. of the tropes that Birdie Wing is 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 getting into in episodes two and three are, it's not a it's not a parody anymore. It is unironically right, doing the tropes right. of many conventional sports. Anime. I mean that's why I'm like that's why I'm comparing it to Siren because I agree with your hero. Siren is much more deranged, but they're both shows that are, in spite of their absurdity, pretty conventional versions of what they want to be. Like hmm. Siren is a pretty like relatively milk toast romance if you ignore all it's of the remarks about of, ass sweat and tears of all lust the specifics are completely ridiculous. right 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 and that is what this show reminds me of it it's because this is a pretty like normal like shonen style hot-blooded sports anime about intense rivalry and trading you know, your way to the top and natural talent versus technical skill and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But also the it is like they they made that same puzzle by putting all of the pieces in this in the wrong place, but they still ended up with the right <laughs> picture. Like Right. It's it's I guess I think the show is still early enough that I'm not sure what the full like picture of this show is going to be, right? Like, yeah. is it just are, are we purely just doing tournaments from now on, or are we going to get back into weird shit, right? Like the the episode preview at the end of three shows us some kind of like fucking terraforming, uh, right? Uh, uh, like indoor golf arena <laughs> with like a real like you know yeah. a, yet another like goth mommy golfer, mm-hmm. big ten, and, yeah. big ten golf girlfriend. And it's like, okay, maybe we're getting back into like the weird shit, right? It's it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, but... I, I I I find it hard to I I I don't if I have to guess, and I don't know. I don't think we're just gonna like go on tour with Eve, right? Like that. My guess. We had our a little. We had like our legitimate tournament, which, by the way, she had to get into by going to the golf yakuza. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was. That that was that actually was very good. I very good. Fully, um, uh, I fully expect that she will just have to join that that golf academy that was uh, 
shown briefly I, in episode I, two. I, I, I really that's, hope that's we... their gulf danger room, you know, and sure, I yeah, I guess you know, yeah, she'll, I... she'll she'll to learn uh, the, the the basics of the game instead of just. Her I guess I don't really style. I don't really want I don't really want a school arc in a show right. that's. I'm not saying this is what I want. Like, I'm saying this is what I expect. You know, thirteen episodes yeah. or or however, yeah. but. Well, anyways, I will say shout-outs to, like, you know, episodes two and three do form a good self-contained arc of mm-hmm. um, even Aoi facing off against each other, right? Yeah. And, you know, they they golf at hole 14, which is famous for its, like, curved, uh, 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 its <laughs> yeah, curved yeah. course, right? <laughs> yes, right. Great. Yeah. And it serves as a great, like, demonstration of the difference between Aoi and Eve's approach to golf, right? Like, like... Eve only knows how to golf in a straight line. Yep. <laughs> and so she just fucking does the Mario Kart, like, shortcut skip of trying to just <laughs> drive her ball straight through the forest. Mm-hmm. You know, in this, like, L shape uh, 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 course. And it hits a branch, uh-huh. right, in the forest. <laughs> and so it stops short. And the moment that Eve enters the tournament, tournament proper. And she's at hole fourteen, right? Again, and the, the, com- the I was other like, way. "Go ahead, yeah." Do the speed yeah. wagon narration of like, ah, yeah, yeah, the other, she's gonna yeah, make the same mistake again, right, right. right? The lady, the lady who's sent to spy on her is convinced, ah, Eve's got this is gonna be Eve's downfall yet again because she never learned how to master this course. Uh-huh. She has no technique, and Eve just hits the exact same fucking line drive, but now that the branch is gone, <laughs> it goes all the way through, and it's some real fucking shonen like i make my own luck yeah. like, no, but, fucking no, but the thing is they, they leave it they leave it in the middle whether she is actually whether she was actually smart enough to use that training session against aoi to like break the branch so she could hit it through the next time or whether she's just actually so stupid that she just tries the same thing twice and it actually works this time somewhere around. in between like, yeah I, like, I, I think I, I think they do imply she's doing it intentionally the second time because now she knows that that branch is gone yeah and she's just so insane insanely confident in her ability to hit the exact same right. line drive. You still have to pinpoint shot <laughs> like, exactly the same way. Yeah. It's it's that's the type of ridiculous that I'm entirely here for. Right. So I think even if Eve becomes a more technical golfer by you know, after a training arc over the course of this anime, mm. I do hope that they still maintain the absurdity of just like she is this fucking genetic golf freak. Uh-huh. can just hit balls in ways that nobody else like can and nobody else would ever like reasonably consider because I think that will continue to be the thing that keeps this show like entertaining and fun. I think yeah, I think if they can stay like within 75 to 80 percent of the absurdity of the first episode, it'll still be entertaining yeah <laughs> uh, so. I, I'm willing to give them some more time and some more leeway here. Yeah. To, uh... And it's it's not like I didn't enjoy it. Like I still yeah, thought they yeah. were fun. The yeah. episode two. The thing three, is, so. just like yeah, I I can't figure out whether they tried to make a show that was out there or whether they were like told to make a show about golf that is more or less like real golf, but also were given a bunch of like, gotcha ass character designs, <laughs> and we're like. <laughs> What are we gonna do with this? Oh, <laughs> like, and make sure you make sure you show for Gunpla and Pac Man. And Pac Man, uh, yes, yeah. Yes. What what yeah, other pa- Bandai pa- Namco? Guide my clubs. Uh, oh man, that totally reminds me. Pac- Kotetsu is sponsored by Pac Man this oh, season. <laughs> He's this got a Pac Man on his shoulder. The season of Pac Man. <laughs> wow. Sponsoring superheroes and golfers. Yeah. It's all I see no muscle. difference. What what kind yeah, of weird know, I... Bandai Namco product placement are we gonna see next? Like. Uh, I'm gonna, think, uh, yeah. Eve gonna pull off her mystic art, like. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, and like you know, speaking of gotcha character designs, whoever is the character designer for this show certainly has a type, <laughs> yeah. and I'm entirely here for it. I guess yeah. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I know exactly. What you, I know. Got, I, got, I know got, exactly got what you're talking about. <laughs> badass ladies in suits and yep. goth mommies and yep. just uh, uh-huh. and uh. Nana from Nana. Uh. Uh. <laughs> yep. Oh my I'm with you on that one. All right. Let's uh, go to uh, Haran San is indecipherable. That's what I'm going to keep calling it until uh-huh. they officially translate it. Have sure. you deciphered her already? Yeah. Yeah. If it were not for Kaguya Sama, this would be the best comedy this season. I'm Damn. really enjoying it. Better than Spy um, Family? 
is well. I, I, I mean, my family's going for something different. Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> for like the straight up hundred percent, we are not taking anything seriously, right? Genre, uh, that, that yes, I would this. In, in terms of trying to be funny, but le- sure. like as your primary objective, but um, yeah, it's it's great. They really got the whole deadpan thing going because, like I said, the two main characters are like not very talkative, so there's a lot of just deadpan humor that's starting to border into like almost surreal territory. <laughs> it's getting kind um, of British up in here. Like they do, um they do one sequence where so like they introduce the next char- like the third character they introduce is Aharon's friend who's this like really like tall like six foot tall girl <laughs> and she's like she thinks that at first she thinks that the main guy's like a bad guy and she's like spying on them or whatever and then they work that out but um they're like having lunch and Aharon goes to give her friend one of her meatballs and she's holding up the chopsticks and they like they're all they're, they're like real tight shots so like like you see this is close up of the chopsticks and the close up of her mouth and then they zoom out and they're like they're sitting like three feet apart <laughs> <laughs> and so so then Aharon's like all right let me try again and they show the close up of the the meatball and they show the close up of her mouth and then they zoom out and this time she she's putting it in her mouth but she's holding like three foot long chopsticks <laughs> okay sure and, yeah. and and it just like comes out of nowhere they never explain that or anything it's just they're like you know what this is going to be a good visual gag it doesn't mm-hmm. make sense <laughs> exactly but it's a good gag um and then more importantly in episode three apparently there this is a trend this season but they uh they bring in the the rap jokes Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. It's just going to become the requisite bit of this. Yeah. Scene. <laughs> so, like, one of the things I like with the with the, the main characters is like, while they're both quiet, they're not like boring people. Like, they actually like want to have fun and do things. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, you know, let's let's go try stuff, right? And um, the main guy's like, you know, I want to get a Harinson a Harinson to open up and be more expressive because she's very quiet. And they're they're trying a bunch of things. There's like a whole montage of like wacky things they're doing, and he's finally he's like, "Hey, have you ever listened to rap music?" Oh. She's like, <laughs> "No." And he's, and he's thinking, you know, I listen to rap music is like the most expressive art form of all. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> hey, accurate, sure, yes. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and so far, like nothing has been getting through to her. And then she puts on the headphones and hears the rap music, and like something clicks. Oh man! And so, like the next day, he goes to talk to her, and she just like randomly pulls out a microphone, and like a beat starts playing out of nowhere. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and she all starts right. rapping, and it's funny because like the first time, and I, I gotta say they they do a pretty good job. Like sure, they're they're riding the beat, you know. It's, it can't, it's just, can't be worse. Is this just than, a fucking shy Ronnie than... bit from the Lonely Island? Yeah, and then like... um, <laughs> it's it's funny because when they first start, she she like drops a verse and it's it's pretty good, and then he's like, oh, I, have, I guess I have to try this, and he pulls a microphone out of nowhere. All right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, uh, my name is Rido, and I'm here to say uh, <laughs> I'm walking to school in a major way, and, and it's, it's like he clearly sucks. Uh-huh. Um, okay, okay. And and so they 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 get like super into like rapping like all their dialogue is rap and then yep, uh, okay. they get their microphones confiscated and they're like, <laughs> well we can still do it without the microphones and they try it and they suck now without the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> like all right powers. you know what you that's know what pretty good. That's, they know that's, they know that's what all they're right. doing yeah that's that's pretty they good. know what they're doing here so um yeah it's just a real fun funny show um. And, you know, people should check that out if you want some straight-up comedy. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of rapping, I guess. And speaking of, like, yeah, I guess another comedy on the list. Uh, uh, Jesus, yeah. we have so many this season. Though, Let's surprisingly, talk... not as wacky as I expected it would be. Like, yeah, we yeah, talked a little bit. <laughs> so we were talking about your boy, Kong Ming. Your boy, mm-hmm. Kong Ming. And we, we did talk a little bit about the, that last time. Not quite as wacky as we were expecting, yeah. but um, they are taking the music angle of it fairly seriously. Yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, I mean, episode two and three is, we're just, or are we three and four now, actually? Yeah. Um, also, what is kinda... interesting about the show is that they sort of highlight an aspect of the Japanese music industry that is never, ever talked about, nevertheless 
being pretty huge, which is like the nightlife and club scene. Like, right, right. She sings in a club and you know <laughs> is getting gigs at clubs and stuff. Right. I mean, the yeah, thing we kind of talked about is like I think the thing we all kind of came to appreciate is like Aiko is trying to become like a real deal singer, right? Not the usual. Mm-hmm. Um, Pop idol, sort right? Of all she wants to become a, like a diva in the style of like Nami Amuro or Ayumi Hayasaki, like right, the, exactly. like explicitly not an idol, like yeah. And I think that actually in a lot of ways gives it the material it needs to stand out, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Because then that is sort of the angle that they have to take for how to get her attention and like how to like you know grow her fan base, right? Is like Echo's not doing handshake events out here, yeah, right? She's, yeah, she's she's, trying, she's doing gigs. Yeah. Yeah, she's hustling. <laughs> right. Um, and in a lot of ways, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's so weird. I I thought, you know, I, I mean, I think I'm still mainly here because I'm a Romance of the Three Kingdoms nerd, uh-huh. but like, <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, the, the, the Zhu Ge Liang tackling the music industry thing also works from the angle of like, Yes, let's see the peerless tactician take on his next greatest opponent, uh-huh. you know. Uh, Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I think that's the strength of this show. Like, even if you're when you're a Romance of the Three Kingdoms nerd, you can see all the fun little in jokes, and you can like follow along with like imagine if this iconic character ended up in modern day. And even if you know nothing about Romance of the Three Kingdoms, like I do, it's still a funny show about like men from olden times trying right, to figure out, out of, all of, of this story. like stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a um, that little extra bit of absurdity keeps it from being, like, just a conventional PA work show. Right, because right, yes. I think in a lot of ways, the normal version of this PA works working girls anime mm-hmm. I don't think would have been as, like, entertaining. Like, right. in, in a lot of ways, the, the Juge Liang... If Kong Ming was just some dude... That yeah. like, Kung, like Kung Ming would be like, like would be like his like yeah a washed up like rock singer or something like her uncle who used to be band. in a band yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> I I will but, say uh, um I'm stealing Jet Jacket for my next lo-fi indie rock band it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> a good name yeah but um, um but yeah I I feel like uh, they they were building up to something here um. Right. Where I I do feel like the the latest episode maybe they drag things out maybe a little too much because it's I do a, feel it's like a little bit I, I do feel like we should have so like the, the the general idea is that Kong Ming is like working behind the scenes to apparently hunt down some rapper guy yeah. or something right mm-hmm. yeah and I do feel like we should have found the rapper by the end of the episode <laughs> I would agree I think that. Yeah, episode four maybe suffers a bit too much from the, like... Because, I mean, obviously it's not even the case. I mean, I don't think anybody would fall for it, right? But it's it, it sort of angry the oh, no, Kong Ming and Aiko are, like, splitting up. They're not, like, hanging out together. Uh-huh, What's uh-huh. going on? Right. It's like, we all know, like, well, it's, we're talking about the peerless tactician, uh-huh. courtesy name Kong Ming. Of course he's working on a plan. The man's right. always got a plan. Right. I think but also they, this they is just not the kind the of whole... show where you're yeah. particularly invested in, like... Of course, we are invested in the relationship because we want these characters to be buddies. But, like, the whole aspect where there has to be, like, drama or jealousy between yeah. them, like, I don't think that's the angle they should go I, for. I like, do think they eventually come out the other end the, with the right message, right? Because mm-hmm. Aiko's just like, you know what, that's fine. I'll work on my own stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it kind of shows that her life doesn't just revolve around Kong Ming, that she's, like... She's got she her own thing going she on. She isn't right. just like she isn't just like the pinball he is flipping around. Exactly, like. exactly. And so I think in that regard, it makes the episode overall work out okay in the end because it shows yet, yeah, hey, like these two got their own things going on. Like they are partners, they're working together, but also like they are their own people. And <laughs> so I think I'm fine with that. But I do agree that maybe episode four takes a little too long to arrive at that conclusion. Yeah. yeah. Then again, episode four did have the the manager dude who was pretty good. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> so says of, Mr. Uh, Stewart. A lot of great mm. English uh, lines. Yes, yes, uh, the... <laughs> in, in that the, motherfucker uh, looks so... like he's about to, you know, declare the next uh, King of Iron Fist tournament <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's about to invite everybody to his island. I was going to say, he looked like he murdered someone and then tried to hide the body and accuse some poor sap of it who uh, then Phoenix Wright has to defend. <laughs> like... You know, yeah, yeah that sure. too. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I mean it's 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 fun though. I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm assuming we will find our rapper person next uh, episode. Yes. I mean, there's five people the dancing in the opening credits. Yeah, two true, people yeah. we haven't met yet. And I guess you know that'll be I'll be interested, you know, also from a musical standpoint, right? Because like you know, a I think Echo's songs are are good, but also it's not really my genre. Yeah, so, like, yeah. I just hear it and I'm like, yeah. I think these nice. are just, these are covers We're... of like club standards. Like, sure, right, okay. I believe the yeah. singer they hired is like mainly a cover singer. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I'm not. I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doubting credent- right, yeah, her credentials yeah, yeah. at all. It's just like it's not. It's not a music I'm familiar enough to know. Like, oh, yeah, this is good yeah. or bad. So you know, just me being me. Like, all right, if you're gonna bring a rapper on. Okay, let's see what mm-hmm. you got. Like, yeah, let's. It can't. It can't be worse than Hypnosis Mike, right? <laughs> mm. Oh God. Are they gonna bring in uh, Yano? Which yes, Montag. which uh, <laughs> Legend of Black Heroes cast member? Oh, God. <laughs> bring in the rap. Oh God! <laughs> Please don't make this fifty-year-old man rap. I'm begging you, Japanese music industry. Hey man, Unlined. I like Jay Z. So, when, when the. <laughs> Oh man, that that's good. Oh that's fuck, good. that hits too hard. That, that hits hard. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. When 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 the when the rap in Haran San is better than Hypnosis Mike, you, there's, there's a problem. Oh but, uh, man. Anyway, yeah, that's that's a fun show. As, as is our final show on the list. Let's talk about Spy Family. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Secure a wife. Secure a wife in all capitals. Yeah, that uh, should that's that that should go up there for like you know, mm-hmm. there's like that there's like that Twitter account that just posts really good like video game like missions. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm surprised like secure a wife has not shown up yet in like a Yakuza <laughs> game or something. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's your next too good. objective. Um, but yeah, so episode two and three, we we do get introduced to your the third mm-hmm. part of our spy family here. Yes. Um. And the say, internet's new waifu, apparently. Yes. <laughs> I got Ever. I got a bone to pick. I got a bone to pick. Which... Okay, well, well, before before we get to that, real quick. Yeah. Uh, just to give my impressions as someone uh-huh. who has not read the manga, mm-hmm. like I knew I knew the gist of the manga, but I don't I didn't know the characters or anything. Right. I guess I was not expecting her to like literally be Sayori Hayami. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, or at least like that would be more of an act and not act who she actually is. Uh, <laughs> but and maybe, I, maybe I don't know what's going on exactly with her at the moment. But I was kind of expecting that to be more of an act than like her personality, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, like go, go, let, let's let's go ahead with the the waifu discourse here. It's time for me to go off on this. All right, I got a bone to pick. With all these bandwagoning uh-huh, fan new, artists new, yeah. suddenly showing up with all this sexy your fan art out of nowhere, <laughs> everybody had to be like, "Oh yeah, no, I always <laughs> like your. Yeah, yours my favorite character in Weekly Shonen Jump. I just had to do some fan art of her." Where were you all when we were going through the your the Briar drought uh-huh. of like nope. 2019 uh-huh. when all of us first read this manga and we were all like god damn your uh-huh. is the fucking smoking sexiest <laughs> styling fucking girl to come out of manga in like the last 5 years and nobody's doing fan art I don't know you, man you, I mean they were I all mean, too busy they were all too busy doing fan art of Makima Check oh the God. Burus. You can check the Burus by date. Oh, yeah. There's like zero uh, your fan art stamp it. prior to like 2022. Like, <laughs> gee, you're an artist. I'm just saying. Um, look, he's, he's I, look I, had, imagine, I had other things. Imagine I was busy when, drawing Chainsaw other Man, things. when Chainsaw Man anime comes out. The internet oh, will yeah. become insufferable. Yes, yes. <laughs> Makuma, will Makuma finally dethrone 2B as the most drawn girl I on mean, the internet i've already seen a lot of her i don't know who she is yeah i've already seen a lot of her so i can't imagine uh, but uh but no yours is great i mean yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is all to say yours is great and i'm allowed to say that because i've been a fan of yours since the start are we, are we gatekeeping spy family now she was my <laughs> wife first uh, exactly oh, man. before she was even lloyd's wife she was my <laughs> wife Oh, man. oh goodness! I um, wiped her from her first appearance. It took Lloyd like a chapter uh, and a half. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so, uh, John, well, yeah, as no. the non-manga reader here, what did you think of 
the uh, episodes. So yeah, I, I think I, I think it was, I think it was great. I think the dynamic they have set up is good. Um, the, uh, the grenade pit wedding ring was the greatest uh-huh. thing I've it's seen all season. Um, very good. Yeah. Very good. I okay. So the one, the one thing I did want to say that I really liked was, you know, I was trying to think how are they gonna like explain the spy hijinks without like giving away secrets mm-hmm. and they kind of just don't care it seems <laughs> like 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 he gives the explanation of oh yes my uh i'm just using this new therapy on my patients which requires me beating them in the face or whatever and, she's just and like, like oh of course right and like no no like rational human being is going to buy that but we don't just don't care let's just it's it's kind of the thing of like it's not it's important. it's it's the one thing about the premise that they have to let happen to allow the joke to flourish right, right? right. like you know you could be you can be your you could be a cinema sins petty dickhead and be like well Lloyd, you know uh, lloyd should have figured it out because he's like a master spy but it's like no you they, idiot like it's, it's so it's, obvious it's that like you can't even yeah. take you can't right. even take that that approach and like which... besides I, I think it kind of works because like your is explicit, explicitly portrayed to be like just ditzy enough right. like I think... Or socially awkward enough that, like, yeah. it's easy to believe that she would buy an explanation that dumb. And also, she's, like, just off-kilter enough that I think for Lloyd, it's, like, to just arrive at the conclusion that she's just kind of a weird lady. Right. <laughs> but she doesn't know that much about the world. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, I... Yeah, I, and I'm not even looking. F- I'm like, I'm saying that's a good thing. That mm-hmm. Yeah, no, totally, not, yes, yes. They're not spending a whole lot of time trying right. to, like work out the details of that and just yeah. just just roll with it right like honestly anya is all you need to like be the linchpin to keep it all together <laughs> right it's like she is the she is the obligatory secret keeper in the group right, right. she knows what everybody else knows right and then she, they limit that by you know her being a child roughly yeah. four-year-old intelligence so. <laughs> <laughs> right oh um, so lonely without my mama uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's just any time like Anya is just blatantly just mind reading and then just reacting <laughs> accordingly to most like obviously pander to the people she is yeah. reading the minds of is is a very good bit. It is real tough competition for podcast headers this season. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, just it's... just you wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every, like, yeah, I would I almost say like... I, I would almost say let let Spy Family percolate a little bit. You might find even better <laughs> options down the line. But, uh... Oh man. Yeah. But no, I, I like I, I really I'm really liking it. Um I think I said last time it was like I had high expectations and I feel like the expectations have been met. Um yeah. and also shout out to the OP. shout out to many OPs. There are a lot of good OPs. Yeah. Shout out to I mean shout out to both OP and the E D. Like yeah. the, the E D sequence they didn't have until episode three. Yeah. Really, yeah. really fun sequence. I mean both, again, yeah, just visually and, and musically. I mean OP, like if you need a reason I my only reason like no, I would be happy watching your boy Kong Ming every week just so I could hear the OP. <laughs> it's a very good OP. <laughs> uh, it's it's very good. Um, yeah, um, I mean, wh- what do you got? I mean, from you guys' perspective, I mean, are they doing the manga justice so far? Yes, <laughs> I I would I, I would say they are Probably, definitely. Yeah. I think I think the only thing I would say, and I wouldn't even say it as a criticism, is more. I think the first three episodes, I mean, even to you, Jill, it, it probably feels a little bit like a pilot, right? Yeah. Like, it yeah. kind of feels like... They kind of all they kind of all mesh together in my head as one episode. I mean, the thing exactly, is that the exactly. show has a rather complicated premise. Yeah. And, like, and it you can't really summarize like... Spy Family in a single sentence. Right. right. And so they need some time to, like, set up the ensemble, exactly. set up the... Because they're going to have to set up even more stuff with, like, the school right. and, and so, stuff like that, so... And, and so I think for yeah. that reason, I think that I'm glad that, you know, you're enjoying the first three episodes. And I think I think they are genuinely good. I think for me, I'm even more excited for what's to come. Right. Because now that the dynamic has been established, the family unit has been formed, mm-hmm. the, the facade has been established... Right. Now we get the jokes about their struggles to maintain the facade, and the hijinks that arise from that, right? Like, right. you know, yeah, I think, Dor I think has already of... alluded to the fact that she has a brother, right? Yeah. So eventually <laughs> we're going to get the scene of, well, time to convince the brother that we were definitely married, yes, sir, and that right. this is definitely our child. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do think part of my enjoyment is I can see the 
potential and like my expectations yeah. and not just what happened in these episodes. So, so, um, yeah. I, I yeah. think, I think we have a lot of fun moments ahead of us for sure. Yes. It's real good. All right. Well, that's the end of the list. Yeah. We made I mean, it. honestly, t- talking about it. this now in aggregate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a pretty good season. Yeah. I mean, there's there's some there's it's, some real it's fun a, stuff here. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. there's just a lot of fun shows, so. All right. Well, to wrap things up, let's do our housekeeping. You can check us out at theglorioblog.com where uh, again, we did cover a bunch of other shows that we didn't talk about on the podcast, so because they're bad. Uh, yeah, cuz we didn't feel like talking about them uh, mostly cuz they're bad. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the Glorio Blog. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Music, Podbean, Stitcher, and of course YouTube, where you can like, comment, subscribe, ring that uh, notification bell, all those good things. And, uh, you know, tell your friends, tell your enemies. I'll catch everybody next time. Bye.